Hello, my name is Jana Rosker. Uh, I'm a professor of Sinology at the University of Ljubljana. Uh, I'm very glad to be able to participate at this online conference on Looking China. So I will talk about Looking China and Understanding China, the third pole culture and learning to be human. As we all know, according to Professor Huang Huilin, the European and the American cultures uh, can be called two poles of world culture. However, she also points out that due to its outstanding and magnificent tradition that was developed over thousands of years, um, Chinese culture can doubtless also represent a third pole of global culture. Uh, the same holds true for the global film culture. For film is one of the most important transfers and manifestations of different cultural heritages. So the third pole paradigm also represents a theoretical vision and an educational strategy for such a future development of the Chinese film production. So in order to put this theory into practice and to strengthen cross-cultural communication between China and the world in the area of film production, the Academy for International Communication of Chinese Culture has established an interesting and creative filmmaking project um, entitled Looking China Youth Film Project. From its very beginning in 2010, the project has every year until now enhanced the possibilities for many talented young foreign directors to get to know to understand and to spread their views on Chinese culture. Every year, many young directors from all over the world are given the opportunity to visit China and to produce a movie about their own vision of this country. Looking China also enables them to express their comprehension of China, Chinese people, Chinese culture, and Chinese way of life in an artistic form. Looking China is an intercultural project which is aimed uh, at empowering young individuals to view the world from multiple perspectives. It works for a world where differences are welcomed as learning opportunities and where intercultural understandings develop naturally through intentional cross-cultural interactions. But on the other hand, most products of the Looking China project pertain to the subjective minds of their authors. They transfer their own views of Chinese culture and society and their own understanding of its people and its history. So we may ask ourselves here whether these subjective views or these subjective understandings that are manifested in the films of these young scenographers and directors can truly contribute to a better global understanding of the country and its culture. So, as I have been working uh, a lot on the questions regarding the methodology of intercultural and transcultural research, I'm well aware of the fact that the confrontation and understanding of the so-called non-Western cultural traditions is always linked to the problem of differences in languages, tradition, history, and socialization processes. So therefore, the very idea of providing young international film students an opportunity to create a film on China in China is a big step towards surpassing such fixed position and arriving in a more objective realm, which always uh, allows students to eliminate many unconscious prejudices um, about the country that has until now been for them unknown, exotic, and sometimes even mysterious. So in this way, the Young Film Project Looking China has clear, clearly shown that Western epistemology represents only one of many different forms of historically transmitted uh, social modes uh, or models for the perception and interpretation of reality. So, for young people, namely, surpassing boundaries between different languages, cultures, and traditions, uh, and becoming able to eliminate their 
culturally determined un ingrown and often deep-seated prejudices against the other always has a great educational value. Therefore, the third poll looking China Young Film Project offers a lot of new opportunities to explore and experience the vast arena of intercultural and global human learning. I have watched many films that have been made in the scope of this project. And one of the deepest impressions they have um, left in my heart was the impression that these young directors have in many different ways, but always genuinely and sincerely, tried to show their intercultural audiences what it means to be human in China. So what does this mean? What does it mean to be human in China? In traditional Chinese ethics, and also in contemporary Chinese humanities, the notion learning to be human, xue zuoran, uh, is of utmost importance. In China, the notion of education is namely understood in its wider social connotations. As it is shown in most of the films that have been produced in the framework of this project, the Chinese society always emphasizes the value of such an education in regard to the question of human becoming. This view is basically defined by Confucian orientations and perspective, and it uh, pertains to this with this, to the things that are uh, specifically human uh, and that are manifested in inborn qualities, ran xing. In such a view, the social relationships of everyday life lead to the formation and development of reason and emotion in individuals, but also to the construction of their languages, um, logical thought, feelings, and so on. These abstract and ideational entities um, are retroactively influencing, changing, and reshaping the material environment uh, and relations in which people live. Without them, there would be no progress and no evolution of the humankind. Human practice and interpersonal relations which constitute societies have manifold different images, but they always have to be learned. And as we all know, learning is a crucial aim of any education, which has to become internalized if we truly want to become human. So in this view, the human inwardness becomes a crucial field of, for investigating deepest levels of reality and existence. Most of the films made by these young directors in and about China reflect on this important issue. So it becomes clear that such views of reality, and especially of reality that pertains to a certain, in this case, the Chinese culture, could not be maintained or developed without education. The latter is also crucial in the various particular, namely culturally and situationally conditioned um, methods of shaping moral values. In my view, these are diverse and cannot be judged or even less universalized. And yet, we have to remain aware of the specific requirements of the times and spaces in which we live. So, especially in the current times of the great pandemic, COVID-19, we have to be aware of the necessity of preserving the values of the Confucian relational ethics, but also of the European Enlightenment values, because they all can, each in their own way, contribute to an enhancement of interpersonal responsibility and social cooperation. This is why I think that intercultural projects such as Looking China are of utmost importance. In an artistic and creative manner, they connect young people from different parts of the world, creating thereby global relations that can be seen as a new hope, a hope for innovative intercultural synthesis that can offer us a solid common foundation of a new global ethic, which is more needed now than ever before. 
So thank you very much. And with this uh, hope, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you for your patient listening.